Welcome to AETCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today's topic is Pre-Hospital Trauma Life Support, PHTLS. In India, majority of young adults, like 20 to 45 years of age group, 60% of deaths is because of the trauma. Even in, among the all age groups, one of the top five causes for the death is trauma. So, PHTLS provides the knowledge about how trauma and what are the kinetics and how to react in a timely manner. What are the goals for PHTLS? First one is reduce the mortality and morbidity from the trauma. With the knowledge of, with the knowledge and skills for the pre-hospital trauma team members. And it, it delivers appropriate care to the patient in a field in a timely fashion. Here time is the most important thing we have to consider. If you done anything, small thing also, it will be life saving in a timely manner. PHTLS philosophy. Trauma care should be based on the research. PHTLS people, they done research on the particular trauma patients like in trauma, traumatic brain injury, how to react and what are the outcome they got and chest trauma, how they got, uh, how they reacted for timely intervention, when we have to take x-ray, when we have to take uh, CT scan, when we have to go with other interventions, like they done an is research, evidence based research. So we are giving trauma care should be based on the research, evidence based medicine we are giving. Interventions are based on the assessment of each trauma patient. Always remember all trauma patients are not same. Based on the condition of the patient, based on the situation of the patient, we are considering them and which appropriate intervention we have to do that we are considering in the intervention based on the assessment of each trauma patient and delivery of the patient is one of the most important thing which we have if you done in a timely manner it saves the life early hours of the trauma is the most crucial time if you done with the appropriate interventions while transporting also if you done something good we can save more acts uh, we can save life and to the facility where all the interventions and the management which he need is available and utilizing the right mode of transport. Always remember all trauma patients are not safe. We can broadly divide the trauma patients into sick, not at sick, not sick. Remember three terminology. Sick means already they have life threatening conditions. Not at sick. That means they are not sick now but there is probability chances to get a sick is more. And not at sick means not life threatening conditions they are okay, normal, like they have very minute injuries. So based on the condition of the patient, based on the whether sick or not, so we can consider whether road transport is necessary or even air transport is necessary based on the patient condition. And in the right amount of time, whatever the decision, we should not take so much of time to decision making. We have to do in a timely appropriate manner as safely as possible. Always remember transport is important as well as safely transport is very much important. Because when you are handling the patient, if you have done something wrong for a cervical injury, it worsens the condition of the patient, whether better to not do anything But Then team approach. Trauma is a teamwork. Each individual creates a lot. Each individual work credits the patient life. This team includes citizens. Citizens means local responders who are present at the site. So in PSTLS, we are giving a community education to the, all the persons about the basic life saving support and all. So the first person is the citizens and dispatch team. When you got the information, how we have to dispatch from the hospital, how we have to prepare earlier to trauma patient that and all we will discuss and system activation. After you got a call from the trauma, trauma site, then how to activate the system? Who is the first responder? How he get the information? Exact place, exact type, how many, how many patients are there? This all information we have to get. That's called systemic activation and fire and EMS system. Based on the trauma condition, based on the incident, there may be we need lot of other sources, not even EMS, even we need police support. We need fire safety support. We need sometimes if it happen in the seas or, or something like that, then we need even the swimmer support. So always it is a teamwork. Not EMS cannot alone do this work and transport services. If we consider a landscape, then road transport will be question mark in that place. So 
in that scenario we have to look for other mode of transport so we should communicate with all the people who is available transport people road uh, transport airways even the waterways based on the uh, place of incidents we can think an emergency department an emergency department always prepared for what gonna happen in this like particularly this area is highly prone for earthquakes we have to prepare for that if this area is highly prone for floods so we have to prepare in such a manner and surgery people so if consider there is earthquakes so there will be lot of crash injuries or any uh, surgical uh, emergencies will come so in a team in a trauma team there will be surgery people also involved even we can suspect ENT or optol anyone other specialty services also we are including in this PHTLS program always remember trauma PHTLS is a team approach and next point is golden hour there is a time between the life and the death after the incident happened unto the death in between time we are considering as the golden hour so if you done something good for that patient in a timely appropriate manner then it gives him a life that's why you're considering as golden hour golden hour is not a strict of 60 minutes always remember if you listening a word of 60 minutes then we consider it as a uh, hover as 60 minutes but not it's not everywhere uh, everywhere applicable if you consider traumatic brain injury person even seconds are more valuable when it comes to uh, tension pneumothorax there also minutes are valuable that's why golden hover is not a strict of 60 minutes it's not a time frame and where it varies from the patient condition from one patient to one patient based on the what injury he got so appropriate term for this thing is golden period not golden hover and how to the first point of primary health uh, pre-hospital uh, trauma life support is gain access to the patient when you got the information that incident happened near to that so we have to think about that how we can reach that place what all equipments we need what all uh, appropriate things he needed so gain access to the patient how can you reach the patient and identify and treat the life-threatening injuries injuries this is comes under the primary survey airway breathing circulation disability exposure and environment we have to always identify and immediately treat that one don't delay and package and transport the patient to the closest appropriate facilities in least amount of time if you identify there itself in the field itself we are treating life-threatening injuries otherwise we are transporting the patient to the appropriate appropriate facility in the meantime in the meantime we should not make any disturbance to we should not make anything which gonna worsen the condition that's why we are doing call cervical collar or backbone backboard this and all we are doing please how PHTLS differ in the following way like it provides current like updated evidence based management practices for the trauma patient it does research on the several trauma patients and which gives the best best out of the what we have that management we are giving that's why it's like current evidence based management PHTLS provide a systemic approach to establishing the priorities of the patient care that means we will in a urge to do something good for a patient will forgot thing there is some distracting injury patient is complaining of off tall pain, eye pain so we will just jump into the off tall thing but if there is a systemic approach like airway breathing circulation then we will not miss anything that's why PHT always always gives systemic approach to establish priorities of the patient care for trauma patient who have sustainable injuries it provides an organizational scheme for interventions when to take x-ray when to take ct chest or ct uh, head based on the patient condition there is a systemic approach and organizational approach will be present and correct judgment leading towards a good outcome only if you do in a timely manner correct judgment always gives the best outcome patient care should be judgment driven not a protocol driven that based on the patient condition we have to take a decision appropriately the first point we got information how to communicate and how to document communication is how much important as well as the documentation documentation because it all involves in the 
police things and all legal matters communication among all trauma team members is critical in ensuring that proper care is provided to the patient we have to communicate in such a way that timely manner verbal manner and written manner if you are not getting a proper information you are confused about it please go with the double check always you repeat that one and you confirm from the person who is giving an information clear concise and accurate and complete communication between the pre hospital care provider and receiving hospital if you got a patient like uh, thermal injuries patient with the thermal injuries where even trauma is involved then what we have to call a hospital where there is both burns and trauma care is available if you only told that uh, this is trauma care only trauma patient only we forgot about the burns means there will not be access for the burns it's like kills the time of the patient where golden golden period we told already trauma care what is necessary for the patient improvement and survival we are giving and we have to know the mechanism of the injury how we have to know what's the kinetics of the injury based on the kinetic of the injury we can suspect how serious the condition is like whether it's a penetrating injury it's a blast or uh, sorry um, vehicle collision or fall from a height we have to consider what's the mechanism of injury before we reaches the place before we come down the ambulance we have to do a survey like 10 second assessment by seeing what you are seeing what you are feeling what you are hearing this and all this gives an important notice that what happened how much extent it happened and what all how many patients are there what age group of patient any special population is involved or not if special population is involved what you are always remember what you are seeing might not be the uh, it will be more severe than what we are seeing and we have to do primary survey which is to identify life threatening, life -threatening injuries and correct it immediately and secondary assessment and reassessment based on the patient condition we will do secondary assessment whether in the site or site of incident or while transporting the patient to the appropriate facility and always remember when you went when you see the patient the condition might not be same it may worse or it may progress always ensure that you are reassessing as early as possible at least for a critical patient we have to do at least for every 5 to 15 minutes transport transport decision is the most important thing which gonna help you for better outcome of the trauma patient we have to think that based on the like we already discussed sick not at sick not at all sick so based on that we have to take a decision ground versus air or even water bodies based on the trauma incident also no so not only in patient condition based on the trauma incident also we have to decide that whether which mode of transport is needed and emergent or non-emergent whether this patient a critical ill patient where we have to done it now itself or it take we can delay it for like green yellow or in uh, red this kind of thing an appropriate decision whatever decision we are taking we should be done timely manner timely as early as possible we have to take a decision what are the potential pitfalls of assessment and management of the trauma patient not establishing the safe scene generally in a eager to do good for a patient we are what will happen we come across uh, we gonna get the bad from the patients like scene consider a scenario like there is oil uh, oil on the floor we want to do that something good but you become a victim because of slippery of the floor so always remember scene safety scene should be safe for the first rescuer victim and whatever the part we gonna do manage so always establishing scene safety then only whatever you are doing it will be appropriate manner overlooking life threats by not adequately assessing or exposing the patient so we'll be like just jumping to the distracting injuries or something so always first identify in a live uh, organized manner systemic approach airway breathing circulation disability and exposure or environment in such a way if you go it will not so always don't overlook for life threats focusing on distractions not life threatening as we are already discussed that ophthal injuries it distracts or patient might be telling a severe bleed somewhere but he don't know he got 
even some other life threatening conditions don't listen them you just do a proper systemic approach performing a secondary assessment prior to stabilizing the all threat life threatening in primary survey we found that there is life threatening something then we just jump up to e eagerly to the secondary assessment to do good as early as possible but what happened you will forget about the life threatening condition so always remember proper primary survey airway breathing circulation disability exposure we have to do then again assess reassess reassess then only we have to consider when to move to the secondary assessment if patient is sick means in that scenario we won't do we will take a decision to transport the patient for the appropriate manner then meanwhile uh, transport time will took a uh, will do the secondary assessment when it comes to non sick patient in the site of incident only we will do the secondary assessment so always after the primary survey only after uh, excluding the all life threatening injuries only we have to go for the secondary assessment even after reassessment after reassessment only we have to go for the secondary assessment always remember bleeding kills faster than anything in the triad of the trauma bleeding comes the first hypothermia so always bleeding kills faster than anything so when you are telling primary survey always remember there is x before the a b c d e x means stop the bleeding stop exsanguination that means whole blood loss from the body then only our primary survey a b c d e comes like c a b manner like in a cardiac arrest scenario we'll go with the c a b manner here also stop exsanguination stop the bleeding that we have to consider whether to direct pressure or any tourniquet we have to apply based on the condition or how he is responding will do thank you oh next next also in the next video we'll see how we have to do primary survey in a step wise manner and how, when we have to do secondary assessment thank you